Hi, I'm Jackie Sly. I'm from Orange County, California, and I'm a sophomore in mechanical and ocean engineering. And my name is David Wise. I'm from South Lake Tahoe, California, and I'm also a sophomore in mechanical and ocean engineering. And for 2007, the two of us paired up and we built an electric go-kart. Yeah, this is Melon Kart. And as you can see, it has this rather large motor, which is nicknamed a melon motor, hence the name. And we ended up making a watermelon themed steering wheel to because we had a little bit of extra time oh, at the you end. Know what? Okay. okay, take two, coming up in five, four, three. Hi, I'm Jackie Sly. I'm from Orange County, California, and I'm a sophomore in mechanical and ocean engineering. And my name is David Wise. I'm from Northern California in South Lake Tahoe, and I'm also a sophomore in mechanical and ocean engineering. And for 2007, we participated in the electric vehicle section and paired up and built a go-kart. This is Melon Kart. It gets its name from this motor, which is nicknamed a Melon Motor for its size and strength. And you can see from the rest of the cart that we've got a classic Ackerman steering geometry in the front and a chain with two sprockets in the back and a gear ratio of 4.5. We are planning on competing our go-kart in a drag race at the end of the semester, as well as a constant load race up a parking garage. There's a variety of other electric vehicles that students have built that will be racing, scooters, a tricycle, a longboard. And we both learned a lot of new things in this class. We ended up TIG welding the frame out of square steel tubing for one manufacturing technique to make the go-kart. We ended up 3D printing a sensor mount. We water jet a motor mount as well as learned a lot of the electronics and wiring to build an electric vehicle. Yeah. I think one of the most significant things for me was to do the calculations on paper and to you know, have to trust that the go-kart wouldn't fall apart once I got in it. <laughs> that was kind of a leap of faith, but it was exciting once we got to ride it. It was a little different from when we had lectures about safety features and they're talking about large-scale projects of like, a pipeline or an oil platform, or we talked about powertrains and transmissions, and like talking about a differential in a car and widening differential to implementing it in a go-kart and then having to trust your engineering and get in it and tr get in something that you've built that can go 20 miles an hour and it's running 40 volts or you know, 40 amp fuses. There's actual power behind our vehicle compared to building a smaller RC robot that makes it a whole different story when you're engineering things. Yeah. I think one of the scariest things was trying to figure out how to get that set screw to work for the transmission because we had a period of time when the system we were using just wasn't working and the, the chain would just kind of fly off, which was a little scary. But we fixed that and it was a, it was a learning experience. And one of the things that is really fun was the first time we each got to ride our go-kart. Yeah that it actually went from a 3D CAD or like sketches in a notebook to a 3D CAD model to ordering parts to like rough assemblies where we had a frame with a seat and it was more of a sled to the point where we could <laughs> roll on it the first time to where we actually were going down the hallway in lab and could drive around ourselves. And that was a really cool feeling the first time we could drive our go-kart from the storage room to lab rather than just having to carry boxes and boxes of parts. Yeah. And then uh, how does it work? How does it drive? Is it good? It, it drives very well. It's, it's still, a little, still a little jumpy, but just part of its personality. It's a little faster than we thought it might end <laughs> up being. The, it only weighs about 65, 70 pounds. So it's a really light go-kart. And mm. with the motor and the current batteries that we got, they're donated from A123. We actually have quite a bit of power behind this. Mm. And it should go about at least over 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour is the top design speed we ended up, but I think we've exceeded it. Yeah. And we can show you how we'd actually start it right now. So we have all of our controls here. We have a car horn hooked up to it, but we won't play it because it's loud. There's reverse, there's the logic and all the brains, a charging circuit, and then a safety key that we can pull if anything goes wrong or to keep other people from driving it if we don't yeah. want to. So to start, you turn on the logic and you see some funky lights that tell us Cart's all right. Tour again. Oh, of of the this part, of yeah. the box, yeah. of course. 
So this is our control box. In the front, we have a button that you hold down, and that's the reverse gear. So it's really handy for three-point turns and when we're driving around in lab. And then we have this blue button is hooked up to a car horn that we won't play because it's really, really loud. And then we have a logic power switch that powers all the brains that control the throttle and make sure you don't go too fast. And then there's the pre-charge circuit. And then here's the master key switch with the full power. And then right here we have the sensors that tell the motor how fast it should spin. So you hold down this switch until the light turns green. And it's green now. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Is that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. And then if Jackie hits the throttle lightly. And then to turn it off, I'll take the key out and turn the brains off because we don't want it driving off the table. Yeah. Okay, and what are you planning to do next? We'd like to put another motor on it. Currently, Melon Cart is powered by one motor, and the brake is op mounted opposite that motor. We'd like to see two melons on Melon Cart, and that would boost our speed even farther above 20, but I think it would make, make for a really fun go-kart. One of the things, too, is we talked a lot in 007 about powertrains and transmissions, and especially a lot about differentials and why you can't have one rear axle in the back of the car rigidly fixed. So instead of doing that, we changed our design halfway through after we heard the lecture in 007, and we want to put a second motor on so it acts as a locking differential, mm -hmm. and we'll get a lot more torque and acceleration, and that way it will turn evenly. Because right now we have one wheel drive, and then we have a band brake on the other side, and it stops, it, the brake stops it now, but you can tell that if you're, it's much better turning in one direction than the other. So we'd like to expand upon it when we are not constrained by the 007 budget and add another motor yeah. to make it a very rigid go-kart and a lot more fun. <laughs> okay. Do we have your, do we have your permission to oh. use this uh, in the promotion yes. of $2 over time? Yes. Definitely. Right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.